Welcome to the fourth training movie in the Coral Finder Toolkit 2.0 training movie series. In the previous movie, we were introduced to the basic structure of the Coral Finder, Coral Finder key groups, and the workflow for identifying branching corals. In this movie, we will demonstrate the meandering key group while focusing on some strategies for how to work smart. The first thing to note about the meandering key group is that its focus is on the apparent surface texture of the coral colony. By comparison, the branching key group works with the growth form of the colony. It doesn't matter that they are different approaches. The Coral Finder's design just strives to use practical features that you can see in the field. So the meandering texture can apply to any growth form. Note the Coral Finder stresses this in the text. Think of key groups as concepts of convenience that we use to make learning coral identification easier. In that sense, they don't reflect any deep evolutionary relationships in the way that scientific classification attempts to do. My advice is to treat key groups as a quick way to get into the right ballpark. If you don't see a promising lead, it's okay to change your mind and go back and try something else. The Coral Finder has a very broad view of what meandering means. Think of meandering as textures or shapes that flow like rivers on a winding course across the colony surface. These meandering rivers can be large or small, bold or faint. Most importantly, it includes any feature on the coral that looks meandering, not just coralite walls. This is a big tip. Remember those pesky ridges on the colony surface from Training Movie 2? Once you have chosen the meandering key group, the next step is to recognize the type of coralite wall shown by your coral. Let's look at some examples of meandering coralites with separate walls. Coralite valleys can be short or long. The wall structure of corals with fleshy polyps or large expanded tentacles can be difficult to recognize at first. It is very easy to swim past this beautiful colony with its polyps extended and not know it had coralites with separate walls. But as you will discover when using the Coral Finder, you can generally solve this problem using the large daytime expanded polyps key group. A final point about corals with meandering separate wall coralites. What you see at the colony surface often obscures the true nature of the coral colony. For example, this coral with short valleys and separated coralite walls actually has coralites with long stalked tubes. The secret to being good at Coral ID is to spend more time in the water looking at corals. The alternative to separate walls in the Coral Finder's meandering key group logic is shared or indistinct walls. Meandering corals with shared walls can have valley lengths that vary from short through medium to long and convoluted. Similarly, the valleys can be narrow or wide. The surface texture of the coralites that form meandering valleys can also vary dramatically from simple through complex and even chaotic. Of course, we wouldn't be dealing with corals if there weren't any surprising examples. So let's explore some unusual meandering forms. Most reef corals form colonies, but some species only have one or a small number of polyps. As these corals grow, 
they contort around the edges to create the impression of separate walls. In some species, walls can be fused near the centre of the colony, but separate near the edges. The coral finder treats these corals as having separate walls, even if sometimes it may appear contradictory. The technical term for corals with convoluted, separated walls is flabellomeandroid. Here is another tip worth remembering. Until you become familiar with meandering corals, the most common mistake you will make is misidentifying the wall structure. That is, confusing separate and shared wall genera. Here are two meandering corals, side by side. The coral on the right has separate walls. The one on the left has shared. How can you tell? With experience, you can tell them apart at a distance. But for beginners, the best thing to do is to waft water on the polyps, causing them to retract. Note. The thin gap in this shared wall coral is a groove in its skeleton, not a gap between two walls. So you can see how familiarity with both the skeleton and the living animal is important to being good at coral ID. Finally, we are going to look at another group of corals that have a meandering appearance. In these examples, the meandering valleys are not related to the formation of coralite walls. You will recall that in Coral Finder Toolkit 2.0 Training Movie 2, we met a group of corals that form ridges on the colony surface that are unrelated to the development of coralite walls. In some cases, we call these meandering ridges and valleys ornament. You will recall that they may also be caused by the way the coral grows. For our purposes, it doesn't matter. We just need to learn to recognize them so we know how to use the meandering key group of the coral finder. So let's start at an extreme and obvious end of the spectrum. Up close, these ornamental ridges conceal tiny groups of corallites linked by septocosti, which means the ridges are ornament on the colony surface and not coralite walls. In these less extreme examples, this becomes easier to recognize. Now we have a coral with subtle meandering textures on the surface. Again, close inspection reveals the ridges actually surround groups of tiny coralites linked, in this example, by granular septocosti. In this and the next example, you are dealing with corallites around one millimeter across, which can be hard to see underwater without a hand lens. By now, I hope you understand just how important it is to get a good close-up look at your coral before using the coral finder. From many workshops, we know that the main mistake users of the coral finder make is forgetting to check the scale. Now let's go back to the key page and review the meandering key group logic. Firstly, the meandering key group deals with any wavy, river-like texture found on a coral, regardless of growth form. You then need to ask yourself, does the coral I am looking at have separate walls? Or shared or no walls at three different scales? It is important to understand that when you choose this option, you can be looking at corals with ornamental ridges and no obvious wall structure. And here is a big tip. Most of the corals that are like this also have coralites that are very small. And you will find them all together on page seven of the Coral Finder. When interviewing corals, remember to measure your coralites and check the scale. To close the movie, let's review the Coral Finder's ID process using a meandering coral. 
First, choose a key group. Clearly, there is a meandering texture on the colony surface. Next, what kind of wall structure do we have? Let's have a closer look. We can see that this coral has walls that are clearly separated and valleys that are about two centimeters in diameter. So we go to page six. A quick scan of the page with an experienced eye tells me what I need to know. I always start by checking the scale boxes. Tip, why consider corals that are the wrong scale? Corlastria is too small to consider. Let's move on. Of the three other corals at the correct scale, Lobophilia, with its fleshy, beaded polyps, looks best. I can quickly eliminate Euphilia, with its large, daytime-expanded polyps, and Tracheophilia, with its clean, non-fleshy polyps. So, visually, we have a good candidate. Now it's time to confirm the key features bolded in the text description. We have already checked for separate walls and correct scale. Now we need to confirm that the polyps have a fleshy, carpet-like texture. Check. With large, spiky septal teeth that can be seen through the tissue. That's these guys. So that's check again. Now you can look it up in Corals of the World and get a feeling for what species you have. One final point to close the movie. You will note that the Coral Finder's description made no mention of this coral's fetching orange-brown colour. That's because colour is rarely a reliable character for field identification. But if it is, the Coral Finder will tell you. See you in the next movie.